Are you planning a trip to Italy and don't know what to pack? Well, today we're going to tell you everything you need to know about packing your bags and what to bring with you on your next visit to Italy. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, I'm Rick. And I'm Andrea. And today we'll tell you all you need to know about packing for a trip to Italy. But first, if you like travel related videos like this one, now is a great time to subscribe button down below so you'll never miss any future videos. Yes, but they've already hit the subscribe button, haven't they? Most likely. Absolutely. So let's begin with pack light on your trip to Italy. If you're planning on visiting multiple cities in Italy, especially by train, the first thing you have to keep in mind is that in order to get on and off the train, you're going to have to carry your bags. Absolutely. And most trains, they have these steps to get on board. So for this reason, we strongly recommend you to pack light. Don't bring those huge suitcases with you. Also, if you're planning on visiting a city like Venice, for instance, remember that you're going to have to carry your bag up and down the stairs over the, one of the hundreds of bridges, or you might need to hire a porter. Now, our favorite way of traveling is to use a carry-on that is light and easy to stroll around. We also use a backpack for travel documents, toiletries, electronics, cameras, laptops, and all of the chargers. And we also do laundry any time that it's possible. Yep. Let's move on to the next tip for packing for a trip to Italy. Bring comfortable shoes. Oh, yes. When visiting Italy cities, you will have to walk quite a bit. For this reason, we strongly recommend you to bring a pair of very comfortable shoes to walk in. Also, avoid using flip-flops or high heels, because many streets in most cities are very uneven. Yeah. You can bring a pair of dressy shoes if you are planning to go out to a nice restaurant. But for everyday walking around, use the most comfortable walking shoes you own. That is absolutely, Im absolutely. so important. Okay, so next tip for packing on your next trip to Italy is bring clothes that cover your shoulders and your knees. In most of the churches in Italy, you're going to need to wear clothes that cover your shoulders and knees. For example, you can't go to the Vatican wearing a tank top or short shorts or miniskirts. For this reason, pack at least one set of clothes specifically to visit these great sites. Also, if you want to know more about how to visit the Vatican, check out this video up above. Also, it's totally fine to wear jeans when you walk around or visit a church or a museum. No problem. Absolutely. Our next tip is what to pack for summer in Italy. Oh yeah. Italy in the summer is hot. In the last few years, the temperature in July and August reached 4 degrees Celsius, or 104 Fahrenheit, during the day. For this reason, you should pack light clothes. Linen is your friend. In rarely case, it rains in the summer. Mm -hmm. When it does, it's usually a thunderstorm and doesn't last very long. Okay. Along the coast at night might get windy, and for this reason, a light jacket or a hoodie, it's yeah. good to have. Yeah. Also, don't forget to pack a swimsuit if you want to go swimming in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. If you're planning of visiting the Alps, Lake Garda, Lake Como, or this area, a light jacket is necessary at night because yep. it can get kind of cold. Yeah, totally agree. All right, so uh, moving to our next tip about packing for Italy is what to pack for the spring and fall in Italy. Well, spring and fall are the two most unpredictable seasons in Italy. They can be warm and sunny one day and cloudy, rainy, and cold the following day. And this is especially true at the beginning of spring, for instance in March and April, and at the end of fall, so mid-October to the end of November. For this reason, you should bring clothes that you can layer. This way, you can remove or add layers if it gets warm, and vice versa if it gets cold. Also, bring something for rain, such as a small portable umbrella or a rain jacket. Next tip of our packing list for Italy is what to pack for the winter in oh, Italy. Yeah. Winter in Italy can be quite cold. Sometimes it might snow in the north part of the country. The last couple of years were unusually mild, but that is more an exception than the norm. Yeah. So for your trip to Italy in the winter, you should pack a warm jacket and sweaters. Exactly. 
Also, warm shoes and socks. Yeah, long socks if you long can. Long socks if you can. If you're planning on visiting the Alps in the winter, chances are that the temperature at night falls way below zero or 32 Fahrenheit. So bring warm clothes. Yeah. In the southern part of the country, like Naples, for example, or Sicily, the temperature might be a little milder in the winter than it's in the north. Like, like yeah, 12 or yeah. Celsius or 53, 57 Fahrenheit. But it might get windy, so yeah. keep in mind that the jacket is necessary. All right, so our next tip for packing for Italy is to check the restaurant's dress code. Now, most trattorias, pizzerias, and regular restaurants in Italy don't have a dress code. By the way, if you want to know what a trattoria is or the different types of restaurants in Italy, check this video. Polos and shorts in the summer are perfectly acceptable, especially if you're going to be seated outside. Mm -hmm. If you're planning uh, to go to a fine dining restaurant or a Michelin star restaurant, well, that's probably a different story. In this case, they'll likely have a dress code, and you should just check with the restaurants about what's appropriate to wear. Yeah, especially if you're dining inside. Outside, exactly. sometimes they're more lenient. Yeah. Moving on to our next tip for packing for Italy, don't forget to pack ah. your essential items. Right. Obviously, you need to pack your passport and all your tickets and reservation with you. That's must, and you know <laughs> that. These items should be with you all the time while traveling. Don't ever put this item in your check bag and ship them. No. No. Also, don't forget to pack some essential items, such as your sunglasses, your contact lenses if you wear them, and the contact solution. All your medication that you take, and with a couple of extra pills in case you lose some or yeah. your trip is delayed. Mm -hmm and you'd need the medication. Some people love Italy so much that they actually end up staying. <laughs> Absolutely. Also in the summer, don't forget to pack sunscreen and use sunscreen every day before leaving your hotel room and yeah. maybe you reapply. Mm -hmm. The sun can be very strong in the summer and it's not uncommon to see sunburn tourists walking <laughs> around Italy. <laughs> if you forget sunscreen or contact lens solution, you can always buy it in Italy. Yeah. Pretty much every supermarket sells these items. But we'll take time away from your sightseeing, your holiday, so be prepared. Yeah. On the same note, you should pack a hat to use when you walk around the city and when you wait in some line for attractions because the sun is right on your head and uh, you don't want to do that. Totally agree. All right, so our next tip about packing for Italy is to remember to pack all of those chargers. It's important, it's really important to remember to bring all of your charging cables for your electronics, like your cell phones, tablets, cameras, and laptops. And by the way, they're all going to work here. Also, you're going to need a plug converter for Europe, and we have a universal one with four USB ports to charge all of our electronics. We like to pack all of the chargers in our backpack, um, especially especially if we check our bags. That way, we can always charge our phones or tablets on the plane, and in case our bags get lost, well, at least we can charge our phones. Speaking of phones, before you leave, you should check uh, if your carrier at home has a roaming package that's affordable. Now, I know a lot of you have uh, the $10 a day package, but there is a much cheaper solution. There is an eSIM package that works all over the European Union for a very cheap price, and we're going to leave a link in the description below for a really cheap data plan that you can buy online and it can be good for your entire trip. So let's move to our next tip for packing for Italy. How much cash should I bring? Mm. Well, the answer is as little as possible. 100 euros per person should be the more, more than enough for your trip. You can use your credit cards pretty much everywhere in Italy and to yep. buy everything. And there is no reason to bring a lot of cash that can be lost or stolen. Exactly. In the likely event that you need more cash, you can always use any major bank ATM and get some cash there. Exactly. Speaking of which, we get asked about exchanging money all the time. Don't use the money exchange store. These are way too expensive. Instead, use your debit card at your local bank or an ATM. And exactly. that way you don't have to pay strange fees. Yeah, well, you know, they might actually charge you a foreign exchange fee when you withdraw. And for that reason, you know, the ch for the cheapest rates for exchanging currency, uh, you know, I like to use WISE. With WISE, you can transfer in any currency from your bank account in any country or credit card and then convert it into euros at the bank rate. And WISE sends you your very own Visa debit card, which you can use right away, either online, on your phone, and they mail you the traditional 
plastic debit card that you can use to withdraw Europe, euros from any of the local ATMs, again with no foreign bank charges. And if you run out of money, you can always transfer in more money into your WISE account at any time. Now, of course, at the end of your trip, if you end up with some extra euros, lucky, uh, you just convert them back and deposit them back into your US account. But I think you should spend them. Anyway, the choice is yours. If you want to know more about WISE and you'd like to support us and our channel, um, we invite you to check the link in the description below. Next up, it's a little different. Mm. What not to pack on your trip to Italy? Well, some tight items that we suggest you not to bring are air dryers and curling irons mm -hmm. for several reasons. First, they might not work <laughs> because in Italy we use 220 and most North American hairdresser and hair curling use at 110. 110. So they blow up. Yeah, exactly. They literally they blow up. Reason number two, if they are very bulky and they take a lot of room in your bag. The room that can be used for bring some more clothes. Yeah, exactly. Reason number three, it's that it's almost every hotel room has an air dryer in the bathroom. That might not be the best air dryer, but it's probably enough for, for you to use. Mm -hmm. At least for a short period of time. Absolutely. And last but not least, leave some room for shopping. Italy is the land of fashion, and for sure you will want to do some shopping while visiting. Exactly. For this reason, we strongly recommend you not to overpack and leave some room in your bag for items to bring back home. Mm -hmm. Yep, that is absolutely great advice. Maybe borrow wine. Yes. Well, folks, we hope you enjoyed our video about what to pack and what not to pack on your next trip to Italy. As usual, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment below or send us an email because we love to hear from you and answer your questions. In the meantime, we will see you in our next video. Ciao! Ciao.